People say, I don't resonate with who am I? Well, nobody resonates with who am I? Because it's not for you. It's for the dissolution of you, which we all ha will, will resist at some point. But that's why it's a very simple and potent and powerful question. Because it leads you to a dead end. It leads you to the dead end that on the other side, the, the other edge of that is, I can't explain what. But it leads you to that dead end versus certain questions. You can find answers. You can even find qu answers to who am I. But if, you, if you're vigilant and if you really are doing it like skillfully, sometimes it's really hard to see all thought as thought. There's certain thoughts we can go, okay, well, those are thoughts. But what about the thinker, right? It's hard to see that the thinker itself is a thought. The one that thinks it's listening to Violet talk right now is also another thought. The one that thinks I am meditating right now, that's also another thought. But we believe that thought, so then we believe all the rest of them. Or sometimes we can see the peripheral thoughts, that they are thoughts, but the thoughts that are so intimately here, they don't seem like thoughts because they seem like me. They seem like experiences of me. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Which is kind of what the ego is, I suppose. It's in a hardened set of thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I like I like the kind of whenever I'm whatever I'm doing during the day, I'm thinking who am I and, and the as in kind of what am I what what am I really trying to be right now when I interact with the postman? Yeah. It doesn't answer the question, but it answers a kind of it's basically kind of what roles do I take on? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like the other thing that's tricky about this is that Every question in our whole lives can be answered. We could figure it out somehow, right? But this actually, it's not even, it's not even supposed to be answered in that way. It's just supposed to be asked over and over and over again, <laughs> which seems completely weird and backwards, but that's what's valuable, right? Because it's totally a different approach than any, all, all the mechanisms, all the tools, everything we've learned, all the skills we've learned in our life, of how to approach this moment, how to approach problem solving, how to approach relationship, how to approach anything we need to approach in our life, in our relative life. All of those tools, not one of them will work here. And that is frustrating, absolutely. Because it leaves you with this, I have this massive toolbox and none of them work here. And we keep trying to think, okay, maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. And you keep going to dead ends, right? You keep going, well, none of those work. Or maybe I think they work, but I'm fooling myself. But I promise you, none of them will work here. They're beautiful tools. You're just using, it's like using a, a screwdriver to hammer in a nail. It's, it's like absurd. Yeah. And there, and then we think, okay, then, then the answer to that, Violet, is that there should be a tool that will work for this. But no, the actually answer is there isn't anything that will work for this. If anything will work for this is orienting, is, is being vigilant and noticing that when we're trying to identify with using a tool, with using a something and letting go of it, notice it, let it let go of itself and orient to that space of I'm fucking confused and I don't know what. And it feels quite uncomfortable actually. Maybe a little peaceful sometimes, but it's this like unsteady. It's peaceful. Oh, it's really uncomfortable. It's peaceful. It's really uncomfortable. Right. And don't, uh, and, and just let that be like, don't fix that because the mind goes, oh, I don't know the answer. That's a problem. Let me try to fix it. What I'm saying is just don't fix it. Just stay there in that unknown, that edge of the lake where you have no idea if you're going to fall in or you're going to go back onto the land. You have no idea what's next. It's just whew, breathe through it. Let yourself be there. That's where that fear barrier is that Angela talks about quite a bit. And we sling back often into a way of orienting. Well, I could do this other meditation that makes me feel good. And there's tons of meditations and practices that do make you feel good, that do make you feel like you're getting somewhere. But ultimately, what's radically different about non-duality as a practice or as an expression 
is it gets you nowhere. It leads you to death ultimately, to the self dissolving or not even something that dies ultimately, but seeing what it really is and then it collapses the structure of it. 